Hey guys, Kip here, Thousands of Roots, and right in this area here is where this crazy couple is gonna plant their family. So the Kellogg's are gonna be putting their yurt right in here, and today we're gonna try to video as much of that process as possible, and our intention is to make this video a DIY of how to put up a yurt. And that should be, if nothing else, interesting. Hey guys. So, today we're going to be putting up the yurt. Uh, we're going to do a little differently than you would usually do it because we're doing it on the ground. Uh, we're putting down a ground cloth and then putting the yurt on top of that ground cloth. We're still in the process of working on and building a platform. So, once that platform is built, then we'll move the yurt again onto that platform. In the meantime, we're going to build it on a ground cloth. So, this is the plot of ground we're going to be working on. We already bush hogged the area. And now the next step is going to be to, to rake out the excess wood and things that would either poke holes through the cloth or just be bumpy and getting little stumps out of the ground. So that's going to be our next step. Woo, there you go. You got it. Attaboy. Joseph's got an important job, sitting and relaxing in the shade. Do you like your job, buddy? All right, so where are we at, brother? Well, uh, we just raked out the area, and now we put down our ground cover. This is a upcycled piece of heavy vinyl that, as you can tell, was once a poster board. And uh, it came square. We cut it to round, about two or three feet wider than our actual yurt will be, so that we could then grommet, grommet the outer edge and weave a rope through it. We did grommets all around the edges, about every foot, and then wove string or rope through, which went all the way around, and it will draw it up like a purse around the door and the frame. And that's the simple ground cloth option. Usually you do a platform of some sort and most people consider a ground cloth to be a temporary structure. We did use it for a full winter in Maine with no problems, so it can be used longer term. But the goal is eventually we're gonna build a platform. So the ground cloth option is the least expensive option that we have found so far for the yurt flooring. It cost us less than $200 to put up. Um, we, it is wise to invest in extra rugs, that's the only issue we had was wearing down on foot traffic areas. And if we were to do it again, we'd get better rugs and just invest in vinyl patches right off at the beginning. <laughs> uh -huh. um, we do have a tutorial on our website as well that you can check out the link and follow that there. Break time. How you doing? Tired. Yeah. Hopefully you feel better soon. Yeah, I woke up not feeling so well and still don't feel so well, but that's okay. Yeah. We're gonna see if we can knock this out. Yay. Hi guys, so and now we are putting the walls up. This is a wall section. There are six of these for our yurt, 21 foot yurt. That is the door section. Uh, it is our door. <laughs> so first you put the door standing up 
and then you tie your first wall sections into the side of the door in this groove right here made to receive the walls. So we're going to go ahead and pull the wall out. That is really neat. Now, as we pull the wall out, we'll go ahead and place the ends into the door groove. Go ahead and push some more in. This will roughly give you your beginning height because your wall should match the groove of the door. Um, the other top and the bottom of the wall. Uh, they're a little bit finer. Okay, the top and the bottom. Uh, on the top and the bottom. Of the so these interweave. Um, there's marks put by the manufacturer on each of the wall sections, and you know you have them laced together properly when those marks line up. Cool. So you keep working it. And we're going to have to bring this in to bring it higher. Yeah. So that's roughly level with this wall section to get the right angle. So now we're splicing together the wall sections. Uh, if you look closely here, you can see that these are two separate walls that have been joined together, spliced together. Now we come back through with these sections of rope, um, and a horsehair from Mongolia, horsehair rope. And we're going to splice the wall sections together so they'll stop coming apart. It's important that when you get the rope, um, you get the correct end. One of these ends has a natural loop to it in the weave. It's not this end, which has been knotted off to keep it from unraveling. So you want to use this end, not this end. You take this natural loop and you loop it around the top outside post. This post is on the outside. The force is going to be pulled in. So you want to be on, starting on your outside post. You then come down along the length of your outside post into the edge of your diamond, around the back, and then over and down through. You now pull it tight and then down and across. So when we're done, we're going to be going this pattern. Now you just do the same thing, keep repeating. Go around the outside, cross the back, over, down through. Pull tight, reverse. So, once you've gone all the way down, the same pattern, for your final spot, you're going to start the same way you've been going, from the outside, around the back, over, and down through, make it tight, but now you're just going to do a simple double knot, go around back, double up your loose end, stick it down through the hole you just made. Okay. So the next step is to put your your posts onto your ring. It will be the top of your roof. So first you just sew it down in place 
so that the main post comes down onto your center joint of your roof ring. Uh, and then you take this rope, the green rope, again, your looped end, and hook it on to one of your brass hooks. Come over and there's an opposing hook on the other side. I know how to make sure they don't slide off. Just trying to line up four ropes, one on each side, to kind of hold the center piece in place um, while the ceiling posts go up. Trying to get it centered and level somewhat. First few pulls are up. And now everything's pretty much centered and holding. Keegan, how we doing? Pretty good. We have almost all the roof poles up, and then we're gonna start putting layers of fabric on. Woohoo! You're it on. <laughs> You're it on. Alright guys, it got too late last night, but we finished the yurt. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> uh huh. It's a long night, but we got it done, and it's a blessing to be back in our yurt again. Absolutely. And we're going to be working on moving into it now, and setting up our furniture, and stay tuned! We'll have a yurtiful tour of the inside of a tiny home yurt coming soon for you, hopefully. Yes, look forward to that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and we pray blessing, blessing over you and yours, yours. and whatever, whatever you, you do, do, do it, it with, with your, your whole heart. heart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Biddle Boo! Where's the smile? Yay! Is it nice being on the rocking chair in the yurt? <laughs>